Good morning, good morning, good morning. Charlie Newton here with Splash, Splash Live. I hope everybody's having a good day. As you can see, we came over here to tape our art class and thank goodness I did not forget my mask. Be sure to mask up because we're still fighting the coronavirus pandemic and we want our neighbors to be safe. We want grandma, grandpa, uh, mother and father, we want them to be safe. So by wearing a mask, you protect the ones you love. So uh, we are hoping that America and Tennessee and Chattanooga, uh, no matter where you're from, that you would think on the things of your neighbor before you think on the things of yourself. And let's all uh, defeat this pandemic by wearing our masks. Well, we have another awesome project today. I hope my Splash Kids are ready. We're going to be painting and drawing. We're going to draw a picture first and then we're going to paint. We're going to use shapes because I can't uh, say it too many times that if we can find the shapes in an object or a scene, we can draw and paint anything. But it takes practice. Practice make perfect. So are you ready? We're going to draw a horse today using shapes, shapes into a horse. Okay, and then we're going to paint the horse and we're going to be, try to be very creative and experimental in the way that we paint the horse. All right, are you ready? Let's start. So the first thing you're going to need is a clean sheet of paper. You notice here on my paper, I've been experimenting with my watercolors no, just using it wet and, and dry. I actually, I use this as a palette. Use dry techniques and wet techniques. We're going to use these techniques today. Dry techniques and wet techniques uh, with watercolors. I actually believe that if you can paint in watercolors, because watercolors are so unforgiving, you cannot scrub, once they dry, you cannot scrub it back up. Uh, it's so unforgiving that when you begin to use other mediums like oils, which is very forgiving, forgiving, and um, even acrylics to some extent is forgiving because they dry so fast and you can paint over it. Uh, if I, I think this is just my personal opinion that I believe that if you uh, uh, can paint in watercolors, you can paint in any type of paint. You can use any type of paint because it takes so much skill. So I believe that beginning with watercolors is a smart thing to do. So I want you to get your mixed media paper. In my advanced students, you would have watercolor paper. So we, we're using a heavyweight paper. The paper I'm using is a 140 pound paper. Uh, that's the the paperweight. I'm using a 9 by 12 sheet of paper. So, um, are we ready? Now, I've set up some shapes 
on my steel life table we're going to use a circle and a triangle or a cube and a cone because we're going to remember try to remember that a horse is not flat that a horse uh, neck is round and everything but the basic shape would be the triangle and the circle we're not going to venture out into any other shapes you can use a 2b pencil or a I prefer an H pencil you know what let's go ahead and do a 2b pencil we're going to sketch this in and I don't care if you have a lot of scribble lines okay that don't that don't seem to go so sharpen your pencil splash students you have a little pencil sharpener I'm going to actually use my electric pencil sharpener. I actually, I want a longer lead. So if you're using a pencil sharpener, an electric sharpener, you can get a longer lead and you can shape the lead with your sandpaper. Okay, then blow it off. We want to be very loose when we draw Do, now so when we draw we're going to use most of the paper we're going to draw a side view of a horse and I do not want you to put a lot of pressure on the paper and a good way to pre prevent yourself from putting too much pressure uh, with your lead with your pencil is to hold the pencil like this in between your thumb and your index finger like that okay do not hold your pencil like you're writing R yet you can you can change your grip later but I want the grip to be very light so we're going to start on the right hand I mean sorry the left hand side and we're going to sketch in the horse's uh, head and we're going to use a triangle we're just going to to, to put a triangular shape. You see how light I'm drawing? See I'm making many lines? That's okay. A triangular like shape. You don't really need the point here. I just want the basic shape of the horse's head. And I want it to take up most of this space here on the left hand side. Leave some room at the top for the ears. So we have to plan our drawing. Can you see that? So I, you see I have a lot of lines. That's the basic shape of the head. Now we need the horse's neck. And the horse's neck, you know, uh, is going to, we're going to use another triangle that's going to intersect the, the bottom corner of the triangle that we just drew okay so it's going to sort of intersect it like that like this you see that we we're sketching this in lightly so that we can make changes we'll put the details in later and let, let it just run off the paper, this triangle. Let it just run off the paper. So what I'm trying to do is simplify the horse for you. I'm trying to help you see these shapes. That's why we can change the shapes to make it work. So uh, let's go ahead and put a circle here to connect. This circle will go a little bit higher then this triangle here, the top of the triangle, the corner, let's like kind of connect that with a circle. This is how I'm seeing it. This is, uh, I'm just trying to locate 
the basic shapes of the horse's head. See how big, how large that circle is? This would be the horse's forehead and the side. We're doing a profile of a horse. And let's go ahead at the, at the end of this triangle. Let's put another circle, not too large, just a little bit larger than the end for the horse's nose and mouth. A circle. See, I have a lot of lines because I'm sketching. I do not know which lines I'm going to use. It's just, it's like a road map to the horse. So I'm trying to discover where this horse is on the paper. So I'm going on a little trip and it's my first time going. So I have to look at the road maps and the road maps are the larger shapes. We always start large and then we go small. So we start with the larger shapes first and the smallest details last. And we do a lot of drawing in between that, the beginning and the end. Always the details, most, most of, the, of the time in the end. Okay. I want, can you draw an oval? I want you to draw an oval. We could draw a circle. It may be easier to draw a circle. Let's do another circle. We're going to flatten the circle out. Well, it's, it's, it's still going to end up being an oval for the horse's jaw. And it's on this part, the bottom part of this triangle that we use for the head. Okay, just an oval. Can you see that? So we have a large circle, small circle, and an oval. And if you have that, you can begin to see the horse already, can't you? Does it make sense? Do not, now since you're sketching, you can make changes. A lot of, a lot of you younger kids, you're going to squeeze this oval in and you're going to try to draw really small, draw large. I'd rather that the drawing falls off the paper than for it to be so tight. And so, so you have to uh, relax when you draw. <clears throat> relax. Do not grip the pencil hard. Just relax your mind and enjoy the journey. So we're going on a journey and uh, these lines we're using are like roads. Okay? Later on, we, 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 I'm going to have to uh, show you how to manipulate the different lines. Maybe we can get a little bit of that in today. I don't know. Now we need the, the horse's ears. We're going to use triangles. The first ear is going to be right on the corner of the first triangle that you drew. At the top of this circle here, draw a triangle right there. Think horse's ear. This is so much fun. Now, we're going to have to use some perspective for the next ear. But for now, very lightly, draw another triangle. We're going to curve these lines on this triangle and make this triangle shorter than that one. Because, but it could be wider at the bottom. But we're going to put S curves and things to make this ear look more realistic later. Okay, I'm making my the triangle that I use for the neck, I'm making it wider. I'm going to make some changes on the neck later. Okay, I'm going to make this area in here fatter, more fat, so that uh, I can connect the head with the neck anatomically correct. But this is basic shape. This is the basic shape, right? This part here of the triangle is actually too skinny. So when I uh, draw the neck, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to start it about right here. But we'll do that in a few minutes. In well, a couple of minutes, actually. So let's start with the horse's head shape. This part right here 
the top part of this circular shape. We're going to draw some lines. Now you can, now I'm holding my pencil in a different manner. You don't have to, you can keep the same. But I want to draw the hair that's on top of the horse's head. I'm going to use pencil lines, just some strokes. There's hair coming through the ears. I'm going to stop. These lines are curvy. This ear here is going to be in front of the hair. So I'm going to stop my lines at this ear. So the hair is falling over the head. Right here, the left hand part of this circle, I want you to make a sort of heavy line there. I'm drawing with the side of my pencil lead. And now I'm going to use the point of my pencil to draw the bridge of the nose as it goes down. It's a long the horse has a long nose and then it curves down like this, following that circle. Can you see that angle here that I just made? It goes down, then when you hit the circle, curve down I'll, with, with a straight line. Now I'm going to draw the nose. The nose comes down like this, back up like that, and then back around. See that? It's like a horseshoe shape. That this is the area where we, where the nose is going to be. Matter of fact, I'm just going to shade that in, so you can see it. You can shade yours in too. We're going to use our pencil lines uh, in this painting. So this is the basic shape of the nose. That's going to be dark. Now I want you to come down this this curved line. And we're going to draw the horse's mouth. The, the mouth comes out, goes down like that. And then there's the lips. This is underneath the nose. This is the little area beneath the nose. And this little curve, you see this little loop here? This line loops around, a little detail. You don't have to get this perfect but you really have to watch what I'm doing. This is indicates where the horse's top lip is. And the bottom lip curves around a little circle, half circle, and curves back around. You know, this is now this is what I do all the time. I draw these shapes, but I'm not using my shapes too well. I'm going to make this smaller because I don't want you to get lost. I'm going to try to stick closer to these shapes. I'm going to do this again because I really don't want you to get lost. So this is the space beneath the nose. Draw a little loop that loops around. You notice how you erase? You can erase with this. For the top lip, then the line curves down like this for the bottom part of the mouth. There's a straight line that goes here, then goes back up like that. Now this would be like the horse's jawline, if you will. It comes, it's like a, a curvy line. It curves, it's not straight. If you make it straight, it'll still look like a horse. But these are muscles. So it comes curved like that. And now the jaw. You notice my oval, I made it a little too small. And you probably made yours a little too small to make it large. The bottom part of that oval. It's like a huge circle. And stop like halfway there. Stop on the, the, the line that you use to draw your triangles. That's where you stop this line. Cause this is like the horse's, in a way like the horse's uh, jaw line. This would be the horse's chin and bottom lip.
Now, we can't see the horse's eyes, but the eye would be around here somewhere. But it's going to be so dark in here that, you know, that's okay. We can't see the horse's eye. But we're just going to, uh, we'll paint that with dark paint in this area right here. You can kind of indicate the eye if you want to. You can use an oval to indicate the, indicate the eye, but we're going to paint that out because we're going to do what's called a monochromatic painting. We're just going to use one color, one or two colors, maybe one. We're going to play with the paint like I, what we was doing here. If you want to use a hundred colors, I don't care. Maybe we should use a lot of colors just so that you will feel free to do it when we get to that. Now, this part of the horse's neck, I need the neck to be a little bit wider than this so that it would hold the horse's head. So I'm gonna, the neck can start a little bit wider, wider than I have it. This, this part of the triangle can come down like that, make it fat. So I'm curving the line, not a straight line, like the triangle. It comes down and then the horse's muscles for his legs began and it goes back out like that. Let's do the horse's right ear. I'm just putting some S curves on these ears. Curve it out. Don't make the ears too, too uh, long or it won't look like a horse. So see how I softened those lines? I curved it in. I'm using some curved lines. So when I do this with my pencil using my uh, knuckles, this knuckle here, it draws a circle because my knuckle, my, this joint moves in a circular manner from the side. See, that's a circle there. Can you see that? So, bring your hand down onto the paper so that you see. Okay, so here it is. So this knuckle here from this finger, when I do that, I'm drawing a circle with the tip of my hand, my, my finger. So when I do this, using my knuckles, my pencil mark is going to be a circle. Watch. See? I'm starting to circle there. See that curved line? And that's the line that I made here on the ear. Now, I want to put an S curve here. It's kind of like drawing a leaf. If you know how to draw a leaf, you know the shape of a leaf. There's a line that curves like this and it curves back out like that for this ear. It's an S curve. All shapes are repeated in nature. All shapes are repeated. Like in my hands, you can see lines because of my age. I used to love to look at my daddy's hands because it had so many lines in it. <laughs> and these age lines, these lines are lifelines, they say. But you can find these same lines when you look at a, a leaf. You can find the same lines when you look inside your body at veins. So we've been created. Everything on the earth relates to each other. Now, this line is going to be curved around that way. I'm still using my knuckles, but I'm pushing the pencil. See that? I'm pushing. I'm going here. I'm curving around like this, and I'm pushing. And hopefully, that'll make it look like this uh, when we paint it. I'm going to darken this in. Now, just by darkening it in, this looks like it's in front of that. Matter of fact, we're going to darken a lot of things in because your drawings, when painting, in technical painting, classical painting, you would draw in detail, and your drawing is like a, um, a novel, and your drawing makes no detail. Uh, 
notations in your mind, in your brain, so that you'll remember how to paint it. So we use drawing to enhance our paintings. So remember I said the neck was too small. I don't want the neck to begin here. The neck need to be connected to the head. This is the top of the head. So if I kind of drew through this, I'm not going to draw through. I'm going to let the ear overlap it. Then the neck will come out here. See that? See how that's connected there? But I'm glad that my triangle is here. So it's like the triangle remembers the road map. So now I'm going to let my neck connect to the head. And then I'm going to go down and meet this triangle. I'm, I'm just sketching. See how soft I made that? That kind of curves in. See, making, uh, you want to be able to draw a line other than that. <laughs> you don't want just straight line. You want to be able to curve your lines. So a good practice, and may, we might do that one day. Now, in regular class, we would do this. We would spend some time just drawing lines. We, we may do that next time. This is how you learn to draw. You learn how to control your lines. Okay, make your lines smooth. Make it, a curved line is more organic, meaning it looks more like nature. Straight lines look more like a machine. It's more mechanical. It, a straight line is what man can make. Curved lines are what God makes. <laughs> okay, this root like this, this ruler. Now, not that man can't make a straight line, but you don't find it in nature. So man, you know, using a saw, made this straight line, milled this straight line. But when you look in nature, you don't see any lines that's straight and hard like that. They're all, they always undulate. They move, there's movement. Okay, now let's, let's do some lines. Look at how I'm holding my pencil. I'm back to holding my pencil this way. I want to be very loose. The horse's mane. I'm going to allow the horse's mane to, to curve around like the lines we made and fall down this way. And these lines represent the mane. The horse's mane can come down like that. I don't know what type of horse this is. This is an imaginary horse. If you put a, you could actually put a horn here and turn it, this horse into a unicorn by using a very skinny, uh, maybe we ought to do that, I don't know. But by using a very skinny, say what, should we do it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a very skinny triangle. I would, I don't like unicorns that much. A lot of girls, I know you like unicorns. So if you wanted to do a unicorn, all you would do is put a real, a very skinny triangle like that. And then put some angles like that. That's how you turn it into a unicorn. Isn't that cool? All right. I like Pegasus. So. Some of you boys might want to put wings on the horse. If I was going to put wings on the horse, I would put it right here. See where the neck is. See, this is the neck. I'll just put a wing that go back like that. Anyway, that's fun to think about. <laughs> Can't help it. Let's do some shading. And the reason why is because it's good practice. And you're going to find when we start painting, uh, the shading may help you or it may hurt you. By the way, go get some hairspray. If you have some hairspray, run out and get some hairspray. Some of your mother's hairspray. Or if you're an artist, you have some fixative, get some fixative. But hairspray is like you, you're spraying an acrylic and that will stop the drawing from smearing and smudging when we get ready to paint it. I'm shading in the eye with black. I'm using the side of my uh, pencil. Follow me. And the top of the, the bridge of the nose, I'm going to shade that 
in black too. Down here where the nose is, I'm gonna shade all that black so using the side of my pencil. You can see the paper underneath. Where this large jaw is, I'm gonna shade black, but I'm gonna keep it on this circle. And what that does, it brings this part of the horse forward. And lightly, just lightly shade, you can put a few lines there. So you see how it brings that forward? I'm not doing, we're not doing high detail. What we're doing is indicating detail. And in art, I'm gonna go ahead and shade in the ear again. In art, when you indi indicate detail, I'm gonna redraw the hair. The, the viewer's eye will fill in the gaps. So what we do is we indicate details and the person's mind finishes it for us. And so that way, you don't have to draw as much. Underneath this jawline, I'm gonna shade that in dark, very dark. And this part of the horse, I'm gonna leave the, the horse's mane so that we can see these lines. You can make the lines darker if you want to. Maybe the horse just stopped from a gallop. Or maybe the horse is getting ready to rise up, I don't know. But this horse is in action. Shade that in a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to spray it lightly. And move your paint out. If you have paints, move your paints out of the way. Anything that you don't want to get sprayed, leave, move it. Shake the spray can, spray a little bit out. I'm just gonna spray it lightly like that. Give it a minute to dry. I'm gonna allow it, I'm gonna let you catch up. Uh, we're going to use watercolors. And uh, man, I think I'm gonna start with purple. Did you mention that the hairspray shouldn't have oil in it? Because some hairsprays have oil in it. Did you mention that? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, yes, the hairspray should be unscented, number one, two. And it should not have, it should not be oily hairspray. It should be uh, clear, uh, super hold if possible, or extra hold. Okay, it's acrylic. So I don't know much about hairsprays. So uh, it has a little alcohol in it and acrylics. But, uh, not oily. And don't, if you spray it too heavy, the paper will start to crinkle. Now, this is what I want you to do. Let's do this too. If you have any tape, you may not have tape. And if you don't, that's fine. If you have tape, just tape the corners down. Cause I think I want to use a lot of water. I'm just gonna tape this corner. For next semester, we're going to, I'm going to actually give my students this tape. You probably have some, but this is just masking tape, easy release masking tape. Your father or your, your parents probably have some in your house, just blue tape, it works. And we want easy release so that when you pull the tape up, it don't tear the paper. So paper is going to buckle a little bit that's not a huge issue. The first thing we're going to do is put a wash on here. But I want the wash to be very creative. So get your wash brush. This is my wash brush. I'm about to wear it out. Get your wide wash brush. And we're just going to, let's use purple. Well, let's use yellow first. I'm going to use a little yellow. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I want to use yellow and I want to use purple. 
Okay, we're going to use yellow and purple because this is a weird, I like yellow and purple. So remember when we do a wash, we use a lot of water. I'm going to put a little yellow down here. You can put your yellow anywhere you want to on, on your paper, anywhere you want to. And you notice how uh, the pencil mark came off? onto my brush, it's a, that's fine. Just be, just be cognizant of what you're doing. And so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put yellow in another place, just for balance. You can use as many colors you want to, but make sure your colors are thin. Now I want you to add another color. I'm just gonna add purple. You can use whatever color you want to but make sure the paint is thin. And we're gonna to begin to paint the picture. Do it any kind of way you want to. Mix it up. Your picture is not gonna look like my picture. Do not cover up the drawing. See how large that is if I'm not uh, careful, I could cover up the drawing. Now, if I want this part here of the horse to be dark, I can do that. But if I begin to lose my drawing, that's not good. I don't want to lose the drawing. So what I'm going to do is move the paint around, spread it. See how I can spread the paint? I suggest getting once you get started, you might want to get the best brush that I like to use. I don't like to use a flat brush. And this is a, a uh, yeah, a flat. I like using round brushes for this type of painting, like that. Not a small round, but a large round. If you don't have that, continue to use your wash brush. You can, uh, let me show you a technique. You can spritz. See how I do that? You can spritz your painting. <laughs> Be careful you don't spritz your brother or sister or mother. And just do an abstract painting underneath the horse. But remember, do not lose the drawing. I'm going to get some purple and sort of redraw some things with my purple. I'm using the point of my brush. You can use a smaller brush if you want to. I'm going to draw the... I'm just tracing over the lines I've already made. Using the tip of the brush. You don't have to do yours this way. Another thing you could do, you could trace these lines with an ink pen or a marker, a sharpie. But be sure to let the Sharpie dry. And what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to get some depth. When I say depth, that's realism in the drawing. You can use dry, dry brush. If, you, if you're a student and you've been coming to class, <laughs> see, the, you have to come to class to get better. I'm sorry. I don't know any other way to say it. To get good at this, it's not automatic, just like anything in life. If some of you are in dance class, can you, can you mix, miss a dance class and be good? I'm using dry brush. That's what we looked at last time, dry brush. See, my brush is dry, it has dry paint on it. You see these marks it's making? Very uh, interesting. That was my, my phone thought I was talking to her. <laughs> I'm talking too loud, probably. So get creative as you draw this, but do not lose. Do not lose your drawing. Hey, <laughs> 
don't, don't, I can't quiet my phone down. Anywho, so dry brush technique. I got them. Maybe, maybe that was something trying to say. Don't start fussing on, at the kids. You have to come to class to get better. Don't say I, you can't do anything. There is nothing that you cannot do. There is nothing that you cannot do. And never judge yourself against, see, I'm using this dry brush technique. I'm still using my drawing. My drawing is telling me what to do. So you can get creative. So sometimes in paintings like this, a dry brush is very uh, useful. I'm gonna go, go back and wet my brush, dip it into the purple. We're just using two colors, or you could use one color. You can use thin, we're using thin and thick paint. I'm going to redraw some more of the mane. I'm going to let, as the mane falls over this neck, I'm just going to, see how I'm doing that? It, it makes it look more 3D. I'm going to let it curve over the neck like that. Do you see how the drawing and the pencil I mean, the drawing and the paint is beginning to sort of relate to each other. So that's a, we call it a conversation is beginning to happen on the picture. There's a conversation between the drawing, my drawing and my painting and my, and my, my eyes, my vision. So I just put paint on my brush, but I want my brush to be dry brush. So I dab the brush on my towel, and now it should be, there's a little paint left, and it's dry. You can also go back, I'm gonna show you this, we have time, I'm gonna go back, if I don't forget, and I'm going to redraw my horse as well. Because that's how, when you lose, if you lose something, you can bring it back. So I just said watercolor isn't forgiving, and it's not. Now I'm doing a wash with this round brush. Just shading, if you will. Notice I made splatters. You can also drip paint. Let me show you. So now, now my brush is wet. Well, see, I need it a little bit more wet. I can drip. Well, see and just let it sit and dry. You can't move the paper. You have to let it sit there until it dries. Because the, the water is beating up here. The water and the paint is beating up. So, just like Jackson Pollock. I want, I've been thinking about doing Jackson Pollock for the last two days. I thought that's what we would do today. But I want you to, since it's Saturday, and you have time, I want you to do something a little bit or difficult. Remember, you can go back and watch this video and uh, do another horse. The more you do, the better you get. Like anything. Some of you guys like to, and gals like to, like to play basketball. Some of you like to, to play soccer. Do you have to practice? What about you guys who like to play football? Do you practice? Or were you, you know, perfect the first time you tried? Now, I know there's such thing as people who just have talent, so much talent that no matter what they do, I've met people like that. I've had students like that. No matter what they did, it looked good. I have a couple of students like that. Especially the younger students. As we get older, we begin to doubt ourselves. And we become too judgmental. So don't be so judgmental. Don't judge yourself harshly. So if I can, I'm doing wet on wet. See, just water, right? I put some water here. Now I'm gonna get some paint. Watch what happens. Dip the paint in the water, look what happens. I want you to try that. Halo. It made a halo. I love that. Look at that one. See, the paint is painting itself now. 
Oh, this is so much fun. This is why I like to do art. Now I'm going to put, do, do the same thing over here. I'm just going to put some water down. So now I just put water down. I'm going to see what happens if I dab it with yellow because I'm just using two colors. You can use two colors. Don't use any, no more than three. Now watch what happens. Yeah. It's hard to see that yellow, isn't it? But the yellow is doing the same thing. I'm going to put some more, some uh, deeper yellows on here. So now what you're doing is an abstract painting, but you have an image of a horse. You know why that works? It's because all painting is abstract. We're just using lines. <laughs> Drawing is painting. Get very creative. See how I'm trying, I'm trying to be creative here? Now I'm going to redraw again using my dark uh, purple. When I use the tip of my brush, I can make a skinny line, see? And it makes it a little bit easier to see the main. I'm not going to make all the lines dark, but some of the lines are going to make dark. You need a variation. And that variation looks more like real life. It's more true to life, as we would say. I'm just going to pick up the horse's neck underneath. Now here's the technique, may work, may not. I'm getting all the paint off of my, checking all the paint off my brush, and then I'm loading the brush with water. I'm gonna redraw this line do this neckline I just made. I'm going to redraw the, the line from the mane. This is just a little details. And I'm taking out, out some lines. So hopefully it looks like the neck is beneath or behind the horse's mane. Now everything I'm doing now is small detail. I'm going to put some purple, more purple. I want the paint to be thick so I can make a heavy line. So if my brush is too, there's too much paint in my brush, so I'm going to sort of dab, dab my brush on my paper towel. I'm going to redraw this part here. And then do a little dry brush, what's left on the brush there. Now everything I'm doing now is just detail. So you would really take it slow now, take it slow. I'm going to redraw the horse's nose. See how dark that is? Using the tip of my brush, I'm going to trace around. If you made any mistakes on the shape of the horse's head, you can Begin to fix those mis mistakes now. I want, see these lines, they are very hard. I want to blend. So I'm just going to touch the edge. I'm not just going to stick my brush on that line. I'm going to touch the edge of this line, the top edge, to blend it. So m most of the time, you can, if you stop to think, you can figure out what to do. Especially after you uh, paint it for a while, you practice for a few months, you begin to understand what the watercolors will do. And that's why I keep using watercolors because I want you to, to learn some real skills. I don't want to, you notice I don't give you projects that's automatically gonna look like something, a lot of, Art teachers like to do that, but then the students don't learn anything of value. So I'm concerned. If I if I keep rubbing on that, it's going to be too much. So I can either dab, and I think I yeah I just took off took took off some of that paint. 
and I can begin again. I'm just drawing over my lines now with paint, using the tip of my brush and thick paint. I'm, gonna harp. I'm harping on practice now. I don't know anything that you can do in life and not give 100% and really get really good at it. Even Michael Jordan and uh, Kobe Bryant practiced. <laughs> you know, and they, they really believed in practice. Working, they believed in hard work. That hard work would pay off. And it did. And it does. It always pays off. Nothing can beat hard work. I don't, personally, my wife is an artist. I'm an artist. I know a lot of other artists. But I'm not really that good at it. I'm not that great. I'm not that talented. But I love art so much that I work hard. So no one's going to outwork me in art. And so my skills are real. Whatever skills you see I have is not fake, it's real. You know, a lot of people make art and, uh, and you know they, don't, they can't draw or paint. They're just throwing paint around. They don't know what they're doing. I, I'm, I'm too honest of a human being to do that. You wouldn't want a person to go on stage trying to sing and they didn't practice with you. <laughs> You will boo them off stage. So I believe in being honest in art. Because if you're doing something you love, you know, <laughs> work on it. See how these dark lines are bringing this out? Bringing this, is really bringing the, the, you know, the more I work, and the more you work on something, the better it gets. But you do have to take your time. Now, I have more experience than you. I started drawing when I was five years old. I couldn't draw like this, of course. Some of you, most of my students are better than I was, better than I was at their age. Now, some of you guys, I know who's watching me. I wasn't as good as you are now when I was your age, but I just never gave up and I kept working. And if, you, if you're having problems with, with your picture now, remember the little engine that could, tell yourself, I think I can. And there's some adult that's there that may be able to help you or may not be able to. <laughs> yeah. A lot of my kids are better than their uh, parents. I'm sorry to say that, but, and a lot of you Especially with abstract, you can do it better than, than I. A lot of these um, things I come up with, I really learn from you. Because you come up with some new ways of doing things. I want to show you something. If I, I don't know if I can make this work. I need a sheet of paper. I'll show you something to try. So let's say you have some paint down like this. Okay, and the paint is pretty wet. You could try dropping water or dripping water on top of your wet paint. See what happened there? Matter of fact, let's, let's go ahead and do it to this picture and see what happens. This is just water, no paint in it. Oh, look at that, that line drew itself right there. Some of you guys are gonna be having fun with this. Look, just, I'm just throwing water on the paint. There's already paint there. So, 
So get creative. Don't overdo it though. Never <laughs> remember, don't overdo it. Okay. Now I told you that I was going to go back and show you what happens when you draw. You can go back with your pencil as well, but first I'm going to dry with my hair dryer. Now watch something else that can happen. Watch this paint here. If I turn my hair dryer on high, watch what happens. It moves the paint around. Now you might not want to move your paint around. But experiment. So we have drawing and painting. Draw Some would see the drawing as being representational. But the way we painted it was abstraction. So we have abstraction and realism together. If you see something you don't like, get your brush and water. Like, I don't know if I like this little part here, so I'll just get brush and water and just smooth it out. You know, technically, watercolor is not forgiving, but if you have some skills, it don't matter, <laughs> right? because it's your painting. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you what happens when I go back with a pencil. I hope I can find, this painting is still wet, but let's just look at this section here. Go back with my pencil line. Redraw it. Now, you can't do this, your paint needs to be dry before you do this. My painting is not dry. But I understand that, and I'm really uh, trying to use my pencil, uh, trying to control everything with my pencil. So what, don't do this on the wet, on the wet parts, because you could really lose control. But you'll see little subtle changes when you go back. I want to do one more piece, and we'll be done. This ear here, I just want a little bit more purple on that ear. I just want to darken the ear a little bit so that it don't stand out too much. Remember, put your name on your picture. I suggest the lower right hand corner for this picture. You can use a pencil or you can use your brush. We may have to auction off some of these uh, things we do for classes. That might be a way for us to raise funds for Splash. So, the clock on the wall says it's time to go. Did you enjoy doing that horse today? I hope you did. And remember, you can go back on Facebook and, and later on today or uh, YouTube and find this class and do it again. If you try this three or four times, you're gonna, you're gonna come out with a really good picture, I promise you. You do your best, give 100%. I'm so glad that you could join us today. And remember, art is for everyone.